Good afternoon, everybody. It's Justin Sandler coming to you live in Three Cube Studios. And it is Monday afternoon. They call today President's Day, so some people get the day off. Whatever you're doing today, I hope it's a great day for you. Um, I have a little topic that I was inspired to share about today, and I wanted to uh, impart some of my thoughts on this and uh, see where it goes. I don't really know what exactly I'm gonna say. I was just inspired by what I read earlier and figured I would just pop on this live stream and free flow. So whatever comes out, comes out. But hey, that's how I usually do these anyway. So <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, let's just get right to it. Not make this a long dragged out one. Uh, I've been um, reading and, well, I listen and read to books. So I'm always always on at least two. And um, there's a couple incredible books that I've been going through lately. Um, Michael Singer's books, amazing. I highly recommend The Untethered Soul and The Surrender Experiment. Um, and the book that I'm currently reading in the, in the paperback version of, which again, is right in the same, the same world of our ego and um, the voice inside of our head, so to speak, and the way that we uh, live versus uh, the way that our mind uh, talks to us. And the book that I'm reading right now uh, many of you have heard of this author's name is Eckhart Tolle. The book's called A New Earth. Well, this is probably backwards on this Facebook feed here that I'm on. But um, so I'm, I'm on this one uh, as well right now. And one page that I read out of here spoke really loudly to me. So I wanted to read it really fast to you. And then afterwards, I'm going to uh, interject some of my thoughts on it and how it affected me and, and, and reflecting my cancer journey and how my ego played in with my illness. So story time kids I'm gonna open it up here and uh, here's where we are in the book this little section is just one page so uh, hang on and it goes like this the ego in illness an illness can either strengthen or weaken the ego if you complain feel self-pity or resent being ill your ego becomes stronger it also becomes stronger if you make the illness part of your conceptual identity Quote, I am a sufferer of such and such disease, end quote. Ah, so now we know who you are. Some people, on the other hand, who in normal life have a big ego, suddenly become gentle and kind and much nicer to people when they are ill. They may gain insights they may have never had before in their lives. They may access their inner knowing and contentment and speak words of wisdom. Then when they get better, energy returns and so does the ego. When you are ill, your energy level is quite low, and the intelligence of the organism may take over and use the remaining energy for the healing of the body. And so there is not enough left for the mind, that is, so to say, egoic thinking and, and emotion. The ego burns up considerable amounts of energy. In some cases, however, the ego retains the little energy that remains and uses it for its own purposes. Needless to say, those people who experience a strengthening of the ego in illness take much longer to recover. Some never do, and so the illness becomes chronic and a permanent part of their false sense of self. The end, that's just one page. That's just that whole little kind of section. Um, I love that last line though, that uh, when, when people uh, experience the strengthening of that ego when they're illness, and this can apply to other things too, not just illness. Um, if you don't recover or it takes much longer, you know, because this illness has become chronic, it becomes a permanent part of your false sense of self. False sense of self meaning that we are, um, we are aligning ourselves with the illness or the issue that we're going through. Um, and this is something that finally made sense to me because uh, I've realized that my ego has been something that I've had to deal with for a long time and I'm still today and um, no, not the typical in the world ego where you say, oh, that guy has a huge ego. Not like a, I'm all full of myself ego. More like the false sense of my own, own identity that um, comes through in the ego mind. Uh, the chatter in my brain that has often portrayed various thoughts or judgments or decisions uh, uh, based on what I feel or what I see that are not exactly true or more projections of myself. That's all, that's all the ego speaking right there. 
And I did experience a, a really beautiful release of that ego, when, uh, especially when I was very weak and in the hospital. And uh, like they said, a lot of wisdom was, was coming through me as I was continuing to process my illness and do my, my daily reading and chanting and all my other modalities. Um, and I did feel a lot less of that, uh, of that mind chatter. I was just really present and really focused and felt really like I was on a great path. And when I had my big surgery uh, in August, that was really traumatic for me and the recovery was really difficult. And um, it was at that time when the ego um, was strengthened. As weak as I was after that surgery, the, the ego that was left before during the chemo was strengthened by the uh, way I was feeling after the surgery and I started to become uh, and identify with being ill. Now, it's not to say that you can't have those days where you feel sick or feel ill or feel down or feel weak and you need uh, others to support you and help you, sympathy, it feels good, people care about you. But there's a difference from being uh, in the person who's experiencing some of these conditions um, and accepting the help versus being the person who identifies with these conditions and therefore um, can only really survive by getting that uh, sympathy back. Meaning if you're not getting the sympathy, your ego is going to push you to do more things to uh, bring in that sympathy that um, the people who want to feel bad for you and, and take care of you over the top in, the, in a way that you don't necessarily need because your ego needs more, it's craving more. So it's defining and aligning with the illness and asking for more. And I did feel at times where um, the illness, uh, the recovery really, and that wasn't even the illness part, it was the recovery. I was so weak and down that I found myself uh, really um, being led by that, uh, really falling into the role of being this patient in recovery. And I was identifying myself with this weakened, scarred, you know, underweight, uh, needy person. And I realized now that that was purely a strong ego based on the illness or based on the recovery of the surgery more specifically. And uh, while I did snap out of that, it really, um, the last hospital visit I did in December where I had those additional heart surgeries and spent 12 days there, that really allowed me to um, go further into that and then find another place where I could release that um, and understand that the ego was playing such a huge part uh, in what I was going through that it was now time to start to release that again and not identify um, with the illness that I was going through and the, the surgeries I was going through. And it's becoming more and more profound to me now because as I am uh, challenged, chan excuse me, the word I'm trying to say is as I am as I am traveling, that was what I was trying to say, traveling through my recovery and getting a little better and not so um, a, a circumstance of the surgeries and everything, I'm starting to see more and more how the ego plays with us and with things like illness. And I, I guess we all know the people out there who um, are constantly, for lack of better words, complaining uh, about their ailments, whether it's an illness or just certain something that's always hurting or blah, blah, blah. And that's really, that's all ego. That's all ego um, defining itself, defining what you're, yourself through what you're going through. Instead of um, just being the experiencer of it, it is defining who you are with your ailment or illness. And then everything you do in your life starts to become a product uh, of that. So if, you know, if you're constantly in this particular pain and, and you start to define yourself as I am this pain, that's who you become. You become the illness. You become the pain. And then everything you do and every decision you make uh, and even every phone call or conversation you have has to do with um, that particular pain or illness which you identify with. And then what you do is you start going after what you need to further strengthen that ego and to further um, justify what you're going through. I am a cancer patient. I have you know, this particular disease, uh, my back is always bad. And whatever these particular things are, you know, we have to catch that and understand that these are ailments or illnesses. They don't define us though. And in my case, what I really had to learn was going through cancer and having the surgeries, it didn't define me or who I was. Um, so how do, we, how do we find the way to the other side of this? What can we do to release the ego 
and still have the illness and be able to come through the illness without it becoming a chronic part of our everyday lives forever and ever. Uh, well, the biggest thing is to become the awareness, um, to become the observer and realize that you are not cancer. I was not, nor will I ever be cancer. I just happened to be a human being who was presently at the time going through a cancer journey. But that is not me. That does not define Justin and who I am as a person or who I am as a spirit. It just is a particular physical ailment that my body, my human form, is actually going through and experiencing. As long as I keep that separation, uh, I will not fall into the trap of needing to be the patient forever and needing people to always come to me and give me this additional sympathy to strengthen something. Um, yes, I want love and I want care and I want people to, to look out for me, um, but I also have to realize that um, being in patient mode puts you in a very needy place. And while yes, I have to take my time and go slow and be very balanced in my self-care and my self-love and what I do and how I go forward, I also have to remember that I don't need all these additional things outside to, to further strengthen a false sense of uh, who I am. Um, I am a patient. Well, no, I'm not. I am a person who happened to be going through a period of time where I was a patient, but I was never inside defined as a patient. That's the big trick. And it's not easy, especially when you're feeling really low. I mean, if you have a really bad cold or flu, you know, you might start to find yourself in that week that you have this cold, you know, as the symptoms of the cold, but you are not the cold or flu. You are just a, a beautiful soul of consciousness who happens to be in a living form, human form, that is experiencing this. And it will go away. And if you keep your, your, your eye on that prize, you will never succumb to how severe an illness can be. If you realize if you start to really become the illness, become the cancer or the cold or whatever it is, it will multiply. Excuse me, that wind just blew the door shut. It will multiply or it will enhance or increase. It will take that much longer for you to get through it and get over it because you are feeding your ego, you are feeding the illness and you are identifying with it. So if you start to identify with cancer and you really identify with cancer, all right, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be harder and harder for your body to release the cancer because now that's going against your ego. It's going against what you think that you are and what you want. And your body doesn't wanna leave that comfort zone. Your body got comfortable, comfortable with being sick, with having cancer. Your ego loves the fact that you've identified with this and it's craving this attention and this neediness and you've identified so much with a cancer patient that it's hard for you to release that cancer and go back to just being you because you've identified so much with it. And that's why a lot of people who have a cancer may take so much longer to get through it. Um, and that's why some people who get cancer may never get through it because they sort of give in to the disease. They I identify with it so much that it becomes so connected and rooted to their, their body and their person um, that they can't move past it. That's my thought for today. Um, and I'm glad that, that I was able to move past it when my ego was strong. And, and for you out there, if it's an illness, if it's cancer, or if it's something even very small, just remember that you are not that. That does not define you and who you are. You are just someone who is presently experiencing this and it shall pass. And even if it doesn't pass, even if you are, are very ill and, and you are gonna pass away sooner than you want to, okay, you still don't have to identify with the illness. It still doesn't have to define who you are. It is just something that your human form is going through, but you can continue to grow and learn and enjoy life because if you are identifying with the cancer or the illness, then every day, every conversation, every move you do is going to have illness wrapped around it and it's gonna be clouded and it's gonna be and darkened by that. If you are just the experiencer of the illness, then you can take that experience and you can go and be entertained by a movie or by a show or by a concert. Or you can keep reading and writing and learning and chanting and meditating and growing as a person because you're not defined by that particular illness. And that's really what I'm reinforcing every day. Every day I wake up and do my morning meditations and chanting and reading and writing is that I am not the sufferer. I am the person who is learning and growing and trying to live this life uh, of, of continuous knowledge towards enlightenment, of, of love, of gratitude, and of servitude to helping others. And that's um, a much more fulfilling place to be.
knowing that there's so much bigger out there than just what the ego controls inside of you. Ah, so let's shake that out, let's breathe that out, let's lose the, the ego mind as much as we can and just be that conscious self and I think we're all gonna be a lot happier and it can go on to a lot of other things in our world, which is a whole nother conversation, but the collective ego of the many um, is what can lead to a lot of the problems that we see today. And that's again, a whole nother story for another day. Today is more specifically about the illness that we have and the ego. So thanks for tuning in and watching. Um, of course, if you guys have a chance, I gotta mention it because it ties in so closely to the films that we're making, um, especially in Mantimacy, um, which is a film about uh, male emotions. Um, repression of emotions, of the egoic mind controlling how we feel or what we think we're projecting. Um, those are all parts of the things that we're going to be discovering when we uh, interview people for this movie and we're going to learn how it all plays out. So um, I'd love for you to check out that film. It is mantimacy.org. The other film, caregivingcancer.org. Of course, illness and the ego of how to help people going through cancer and their caregivers will also play very closely into that. And we'll, we'll ask people uh, as well how that plays in as the caregiver experiencing it. You know, do you fall into the role? Um, the ego mind identifies you with being a caregiver. Uh, that could be a whole nother topic that uh, would be great to explore there because again, you get stuck in being just the caregiver for another person. You're no longer operating from this open place. You're living a role. And when you start to live in roles, as we all know, they're not real. They're something we start to act in or identify with, but they're not really you. They're just roles. So um, please check out our two sites. And you know, I'll throw the links in the comments below just in case you want a quick link and I'm not have to type it in. But um, hope you learned a little something today. Every time I share one of these, I learn some more. And uh, I'm glad I did. The egoic mind uh, and its connection to illness. It's an interesting topic that I'm going to explore some more in our films and beyond. So you guys, thanks for listening and hanging out. Glad we had this talk. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'm sure I'll be back again more soon with more things to say and wisdom and love and all that good stuff. Until next time, I bid you adieu. Peace.